director of the Americas program at the Center for International Policy. She's also a columnist. Laura, what would a Scioli administration exactly look like? Well, I think it definitely will be a continuation of many of the policies of the Kirchner government, and Daniel Scioli has said that himself. He is closer to the business class, and they know they have some serious economic problems to resolve. The economy has been growing at half a percentage point, and it will face other problems about the same level of, of non-growth for this year as well. And a lot of that has to do with the reliance on the export of commodities whose prices have gone way down. So he recognizes that there's a need to at least modify some of those policies. However, he's very committed to continuing with the social policies that have been the hallmark of the Kirchner administrations. Christina Kirchner's popularity remains high, around 40 percent after eight years in office. How has she been able to maintain this with all the scandals surrounding her? Well, there, the society is very polarized, but her popularity is high. And primarily this is because of those social programs that I mentioned that allow access to education for all children and uh, provide retirement benefits and that kind of thing from the state. This has been very important to Argentina. We have to remember that Argentina, before President came in, her husband came into office, suffered a severe economic crisis. And so being able to cover a basic standard of living for many people has been very important for her administration. She's also kept up the economy. The economy has serious problems now, especially the inflation rate. But more or less, there was a slight uptick in recent months, and that helped her popularity. And as a result, it helped Scioli as well. Scioli obviously in the lead here, but the other two, the mayor and the congressman, close behind. What are the odds that there will be, or in your opinion, uh, be a runoff on November 22nd? Well, it's too close to tell right now. We'll know in a few hours, or at least probably by morning. Um, I think there's a good possibility, and this will be, be an unprecedented situation for Argentina. Now, we have to remember here that we're not really talking about who's going to win because all the polls have shown that Scioli has an advantage. We're talking about that magical number 10, and right now the polls are straddling this, whether he will make that and be able to win in the first round or not. If it opens up to a second round, what happens there is it opens up to a new period of politicking. And that means that the Scioli campaign will have to negotiate. They'll have to negotiate with the strong third, which is Sergio Massa, and his followers, and begin to see how they can move maneuver into a situation to win solidly that second round. Right. Well, the next person will take office December 10th, and he's going to inherit a country troubled by inflation. The overvalued currency and that can economy that's facing what the International Monetary Fund predicts will be 0.7 percent contradiction next year. What happened, can you tell us, to all the economic magic that surrounded the early Kitchener years? Why are they in this situation? Well, it was magic because the situation was so bad when he came in and he was able to turn it around and stabilize it, that doesn't mean that it was ever great. You know, there's, there was a period of time, and again, it's those commodity prices, really, in which the Southern Cone companies, uh, countries, and Argentina in particular, really benefited from the commodity exports for minerals and agricultural exports. And now we've seen a crash in many of those prices, and they're rec recognizing the cost of the dependency on the export of raw materials. So they have to go into a new kind of policy that looks at, at more industrialization and that looks at how to control inflation, because 25 percent inflation is a real pocketbook issue for voters. 